Hello everyone and welcome to our Aussie Live conference. It's with great pleasure that I'm going to introduce one of my probably dearest colleagues um, who really supported me and helped me get into this virtual environment. So Carol and I have worked quite a bit uh, trying to bring webinars and free online sessions to Australian educators. So it will be of great interest to me today to be able to hear about Carol and her latest direction with the Toastmasters Online. Just to let you know though, we really do want to thank our sponsors and supporters, the Australia E-Series, the Learning Revolution Project and Blackboard Collaborate. Um, there's just a small number of us in the room at the moment, but we'd still love to know where we're all from. So I'll dra drag my little smiley face down there lower southeastern Australia. So Lindy, I don't know if you're able to just click or have we got tools? Yes. Um, over in the US, so it's great to have you with us Lindy. Um, Slave Lake, I'll have to Google that and look it up later. So Carol, without further ado, we look forward to hearing all about connecting the Toastmasters online. Thank you. Anne, I really appreciate your introduction. It's lovely to have had the association with you. I'll just bring my video interview for you. Let's pop that down a little bit like so. And you should be able to see me in my office. And if I move over a little bit, behind me you can see all my Toastmaster Awards in frames on the wall. And it looks like I've got a fan growing out of my head. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today. I'll turn the video off now. Can often chew up the bandwidth. I really wanted to have a, a session today which allowed us to look at the ways in which we can learn public speaking online. So that's why I've called it connecting the Toastmasters. But I guess what I should really have called it is connecting the public speakers. And we've had many of those, including Lindy herself. And here's Donna just joining us. Welcome, Donna. Donna is a Toastmaster, so I'm very glad to see her here. So my way of providing this webinar today is to focus on a little bit of the Toastmaster experience and to show what it's like to use those skills online. And as you came into the room, you would have seen there's a little pop-up screen showing a sample agenda that I have shared with you today and you can save that for yourself. I will explain a little more about what Toastmasters is all about and how we conduct our meetings and I want to involve you in, in the session today. So my aim is to give you a snapshot of what it's like to be a public speaker online for Toastmasters. And in my introduction that you might have seen online, I said that there would be a guest speaker. Well, guess what? That's me. And <laughs> the impromptu speakers, guess what? That would be you. And I like this little cartoon because it really sums up the feeling that many people have in approaching public speaking. Throughout the session today I've provided some opportunities for you to do some impromptu speaking. Now I've heard from Lindy already that her microphone is not working but Donna you might let me know if you have a microphone and you might want to use that today. But you can also use the text chat for answers to the questions that I'm going to pose for you. And so these opportunities are really to give you opportunities to speak off the cuff. Excuse my phone. It's a busy day here in Barranduda. It's my husband's birthday, so that'll be people ringing in to wish him happy birthday. So first of all, I wanted to find out what you know about Toastmasters. You'll find in the participants pod a little polling tool. It's on the right hand side you'll see a smiley face and a way sign, a hand raiser and then the ABCD. 
So I'm going to choose B because I'm in Toastmasters. If you could choose from your set of polling tools, I'll be able to see your choice in the participant pod. So Lindy is choosing C. <laughs> Excellent. And I've chosen B. Anne is away for the moment. But Donna, if you can find your polling tools, looking up above the names, four little icons, that's it. Wonderful. Yes, I thought that would be the case. All right, now I'm going to publish that to the board so that you can see the results of that little poll. That's fine, Anne. <laughs> Good. I I got you your choice just in time there. So this is one way we can do some impromptu polling whilst we're in a Toastmasters meeting. And a Toastmasters meeting for the first timers can be a little strange and sometimes a little daunting. So I want to take you through a few of the things that might help you to feel confident about that and uh, this is timely for Toastmasters because it's talk up Toastmasters time. We're looking for new members in clubs right across the world. So how do you find out about Toastmasters? The link here will take you to their site. Let me pop that in for you. Some of us will know it well and for others it might be the first time in. I think it's been revamped in the last few months and is now looking pretty sharp as a Toastmasters website and you do get to log in as you'll see here there is a little login symbol and once you become a Toastmaster you have a unique Toastmaster number and an identity that allows you to log in and find even more details than you do as a guest. I might just pop out to the website and show you it live, perhaps in just a moment. I need to make sure I've got that one up and ready to go. So first of all, I'm going to ask you some questions and I'd like you to pose questions for me in the text chat and I see that Anne is well ahead of me and asked her first question. Anne, would you like to pop on your microphone and ask your question so that we have that recorded in voice as well? Um, Carol, yes, because of um, my passion for global education, just wondering, are most countries represented or are there some um, that aren't and is it mainly English speaking or do people speak in their own languages etc? An excellent question, almost on cue. <laughs> it is a, a large organisation, an international one that stretches across the world. Many, many countries are represented and many clubs have their meetings in their own native languages. We also have uh, some clubs who have, uh, what would you say, a, a mixture of cultures and nationalities within them and so they are encouraged to exchange their, their culture in those meetings. But what I thought I'd do is I'll pop out to the Toastmasters.org and you'll be able to see for yourself just how far reaching it is. So I'm just going to share my application with you. Hopefully you can see that now. Absolutely and the use of Toastmasters and the education program that it expounds for its members, I advocate for people in all walks of life. The younger members can do their Toastmasters experience through Gavel clubs, Gavel, G-A-V-E-L. And we do speak to classes. You'll find Toastmasters across the world doing exactly that. If you wanted to find a club, 
in your neighbourhood. You'll go to the link at the top called Find a Club and we'll put in uh, the specific location. So let's put in Hawksdale for Anne's location. I'm wondering why it's not allowing me. It's not allowing me to do it live. Uh, it's just a bit slow. Carol, you may but just have to log yes. in to you. Do you have to log no, in? No, not no, no. Anyone can do this, but here we are. It's picked up already some of those in Australia. So you can see a wide range of clubs showing on the screen from Palm Beach all the way down. Let me just scroll. To Campbelltown. So it's assumed that I'm in the Sydney area, which is interesting. <laughs> there are huge numbers. Donna, I'm sure you know the answer. How many Toastmasters clubs do we have in the world? Could you text that in? Or perhaps you'd like to use your microphone. Mm -hmm. Is that your guess there, Anne? One million? Not quite. <laughs> Yeah, it was a wild guess. We have about 353,000 clubs across the world and we span 400 odd countries. All right, let me come back to my slides. I'll pop in and out of these just to give you some live action. So here is a point. Oh, Lindy, well done. You found one an hour away from. Athabasca. <laughs> Here's an opportunity. Why would you want to join Toastmasters is the question. And the second part of the question is how could it help in preparing you for presenting online? Please add your text as an answer or response to that in the text chat. And if you'd like an opportunity to speak for one minute on those two questions, I'm going to put the timer on. And let's see if, Donna, are you able to use your microphone? You just click on the talk button and it should work for you. Is that working? It is working. Fantastic. <laughs> Hello and welcome. Thank you. Okay, can you give me an answer to one or both of these questions and I'll put the timer on for one minute. This is done in typical Toastmaster impromptu times. We call them table topics. We do. Why would you want to join Toastmasters? <coughs> Toastmasters is a great organisation because it grows your personal confidence, not just in speaking in front of people, but in just articulating ideas and putting them in a formal framework so that you have an opening, a middle and a conclusion. And then, and you get to meet great people as well and link into lots of different places around the world. So that, and there are lots of resources to help you grow in that experience through the formal education. Well done. Okay, you spoke for a minute. <laughs> it can be a little daunting, can't it, to uh, fill the time, but um, uh, good, good opportunity there. So Anne, I'd like to ask you the second question, and I'll give you a minute, and could you tell us how you think it would help you present online? 
How could a uh, Masters help me in preparing uh, for presentations online? I think it would have a wonderful impact. I find as Australians that our voice can speak extremely quickly. We have a very distinct accent and I think it's very um, important if we're going to present online that people can understand us and therefore we have to slow down our speech and articulate. I also love the fact that Toastmasters is global so it would also help in preparing work for different cultures because our language, um, our appearance, our gestures, all sorts of things can impact and sometimes offend cultures but it can also improve that communication to ensure that we're actually understood. Uh, so I think it would be great for preparation. Well done, right on time. Now you would have got the tick of approval if you were in the Toastmasters meeting to do that impromptu talk. Thank you so much. And Lindy, I hope that you've had time to think through and to text in for us. And yes, you have. I'm scrolling back to find out. Experience and fellowship with like-minded people. And it would help you prepare with tips and practice in presentation skills. Absolutely. Well done. All right, moving on. This is the second part of the site that uh, you scroll down to find when you're in Toastmasters.org and it, it actually is an interactive part of the site where you can follow the journey to find out whether Toastmasters is right for you. So for example on that page you would click into member testimonials to find out what other people have had to say about their experiences and I think that that is a really good selling point if we can hear from other people about it. On the second part of that little journey, you would then be able to find a club, which is what we did a moment ago. We clicked into find a club to locate one or more in your area. You'll always also find information about your local Toastmasters clubs in the local papers. For example, for my clubs, we put it in the border mail. And recently, we were interviewed for a, another local paper and we had an article. So all of these things helped to put it out there to the community. In my home club of Albury Wodonga, we have 28 existing members and we're aiming for five new members this month. In my small club in formation, the Indigo Valley Speakers, we have just three official members and three waiting to join up and we have small meetings of six people and that's usually the, how that starts. So I would like to pass over that one because we've really done it and when I clicked on find a club for myself within 25 miles radius of me of course I could find my Albury Wodonga club and the beauty of it is that it gives its placement on the map. The next step is how to join and it gives you these in three easy steps. So after you've found a club and you go to visit online, then you can ask if you can come to a meeting. And in step two, the Vice President of Membership will give you an application form and you fill that in and it is sent to Toastmasters International with your fees. They vary from club to club, but the US dollars for a six month join up is 36. You get a new member kit sent to you and that comprises of uh, a couple of manuals in which you can then work on your projects. So I'd like to hear now uh, very briefly, <laughs> what is your biggest fear and what's stopping you from public speaking and you might have to put on someone else's hat here to answer that question as I'm sure all of you in the room do not have the same fears that other people do. And we'll see if Donna might also want to share a response with us in voice as to what she's heard other people say from her club. 
um, most people join our club to increase their confidence. Um, it's not necessarily just to actually speak. Well, it is to speak in front of people, but it's more about gaining the confidence to to talk. I think in bigger groups. Yes, absolutely. I agree with you wholeheartedly on that one. I find that many people from different walks of life have special occasions that they need to speak at and they are not confident. So they then think, well, who can help me? And if they are smart, they'll find a club, a Dosemaster club, and come and visit. <laughs> All right, let's stop the clock on that one. Uh, let's see if Lindy's added anything extra in here. Uh, I see a question though from Anne. How do really nervous people get on? And that's an interesting question because in the club format, we pride ourselves on being a friendly, supportive club in which nervous people can feel supported and we gently lead them through their tasks and not put too much pressure on them immediately. So one of the first things that we get them to do in a little round robin is to just say who they are and why they've come along. Right, let's move on. On the next step in the journey, each person who then joins a Toastmaster club can work through a self-paced education program. And this program has changed over the years and I have to say that Toastmasters has been going for 90 years now. We had our 90th birthday just last year. And it was originally set forward by Ralph Smedley in California as a way of improving people in community. So the education program has two main tracks. One is for communication and the other is for leadership. As Donna was mentioning before, some people join for one or the other of those tracks. As you see here on this slide, the communication track and leadership track are mentioned right at the top. That's where people begin. The first manual that they receive is called the Competent Communicator Manual and it has 10 educational projects in it and they start off very simply with their first speech called their icebreaker and they go on to their 10th speech which is to persuade and inspire. Once they've done those 10 speeches, they will then get an award from Toastmasters International in the form of a certificate, which they can proudly display on their wall. You can then go on to advanced communication and you can reach bronze, silver and gold levels. And for, for many in the program, this is a really good incentive for them to continue with Toastmasters. But some who have come in for specific reasons stop at the end of their competent communicator and that's it for them. You can do the leadership track and every meeting gives an opportunity for members of club to step up into various roles. And you might be the person who opens the meeting or you may be the person who facilitates it or you may be someone who evaluates another speaker or you may be giving the toast. Plenty of opportunities within a club and then you move on to doing club officer roles in which you could be the president, vice president and a few others that I'll, I'll list for you in just a moment. You can do advanced leadership projects. There's one called the high performance leadership which in, encourages you to do a a project maybe inside your Toastmasters or in the community of much high powered leadership. You get a special award for that one. 
and all of these go towards getting your Distinguished Toastmaster recognition. So we call that the DTM. And just a brief mention that as you heard me say, 90 years is a long time and things change so they are revitalising the education program as we speak and much more online opportunities are being brought forward. And so this link at the top here, if you find your way to it, you'll find more information about it. Yes, more and more of the program is becoming available online. So your first steps. One that we advocate for new members or prior to becoming a member is to join what we call a Speechcraft program. So this is like a mini Toastmasters club that meets for between four to eight meetings and we give instruction on how to do each and every role and how to prepare their speeches and give them time to practice. You could run it online through your college, Lindy if your college is for adult learners. I, for example, am busy putting more and more online as I think about it and Speechcraft is one of those. So Donna, did you want to mention anything about Speechcraft? Have you run those before? No, no. Um, I haven't been involved in any Speechcraft courses. Okay. That's all right, thank you. Um, I think that they are a really worthwhile pursuit and if you see one of those advertised in your area, that's a good way in. And there is a minimum age for membership and that's 18, but there's no maximum age. We have people right into their 80s, still going. So the second step is to join that Toastmaster Club and of course that might take a few steps in itself. Visit and uh, be welcomed and observe for a few of their meetings before you join. Then you can begin to see strategies and be supported in moving beyond your comfort zone. And for many, that's the biggest hurdle. And then finally, you would get brave and you prepare your first speech, which we call the icebreaker, which is all about yourself. So that's a reasonably easy one to put together you can use notes and you can prepare it to give an insight into you, your life or a specific part of your philosophy. So here are some of the other leadership roles that I mentioned before. When you join a club and become a committee member, you have an opportunity to be any one of these. So at the top of the list is the VP membership whose job it is to recruit new members and to support them as they become Toastmasters. The VP of Public Relations is the one who will have the job of promoting your club in the area. The Vice President of Education is the person who will help the person individually to track where they want to go with their communication and leadership. The president, of course, is the one who manages the club and gives the overall direction to the committee members. Secretarial role is an important one too, uh, who keeps the minutes of the meetings of the executive and does a lot of the uh, collection jobs for those visitor kits and new member kits from the post office. Sergeant at Arms is an interesting one. It's kind of like the role when we introduce people on these webinars. It's your job to set up the room and to meet and greet people and to bring the meeting to order and to close it in a timely manner. And of course we need the treasurer to accept the membership fees and dues and to remind us when they're due again. Thanks for your comments there, Lindy. Yeah, that's a good idea, sponsors. Let's move on. This is the guest speaking part of this and Anne, would you put the timer on for say 12 minutes please, that's what I think this one will take. And so when a guest speaker comes to a meeting, they come prepared 
with a speech that may be a personal one, but in this case, it is an educational one from another manual called the Better Speaker series. And when I was putting this together, I'm, I've used some of the slides that Toastmasters International provide, but I wanted to focus on, or to get you to focus on how this might be useful for you in your role as a speaker online. And the first thing to do is to consider, did I jump two slides there? No, just checking. Just consider the sources from which you might select the topic for your speech. For example, Anne's webinar that she has just finished today in Aussie Live was called Using Skype in the Classroom. Now that's a topic of great interest to her and definitely one that was fitting for an educational audience such as ours. But for other people, they may in fact want to talk about their personal experience in their career or with their family. So there's a wealth of information within that to source your material. In other manuals, you're asked to reach outside of your comfort zone and to look for topics for your speeches that you might get from websites. Perhaps you read blogs and you are intrigued with some of the comments that come through from other educators and you want to make sure that you can pass that on to others in your club. Of course, books and magazines and newspapers then provide other reference material and some of these make really great sources of topics for your speeches. But once you've selected your topic, the next step is to consider your audience. So what we're doing in this part of the process is to narrow your selection. You might have had lots of different ideas, but who is it going to be relevant for? So in an online audience, we're never sure how many are going to join us, not that that matters, but if it's a very large audience, the way in which you do your speech might vary from when you're doing it for a small number. Today, for example, I've been able to integrate your comments smoothly because we're just a small group too hard to do with a large number. You, know, you might need to consider the age range and how important or relevant it is to them. So if a Toastmaster is going into a school to speak to a group of students, then of course their subject matter will need to suit that age group. The biggest thing that we need to focus on, I think, to narrow your selection is how familiar are you with the subject and how can you do it without uh, reference to notes to any great extent. Some people use little jogging jogger memory cards and others some slides like I am using here. But we give people opportunities in our club meetings to use all of these tactics. So we want to expand our ability to do so. And consider your audience's interests and backgrounds and experiences and try not to preach to the converted and also to make them think. In narrowing your selection, you would also need to consider the occasion. Many times our Toastmaster meetings have themes. So for example, on the agenda that I sent you for King Arthur's Playground, the theme for the meeting was beginnings. So the speakers try to mould their speeches to match the theme. So you'll see that Gandalf was giving a speech on cue, routine and rewards and Little Red Riding Hood was giving a speech on cold calling queen. And if you're looking at the agenda as I am now, each speech has a required minimum duration and a required maximum duration. So for these two speeches, uh, Competent Communicator 2 is between five and seven minutes. I hope that makes sense to you. Unless you've been in a Toastmaster meetings, it might not. You also need to consider when are you scheduled to speak. If you're in a club meeting, uh, many people opt not to be first. That can be a little daunting. 
So sometimes we have two or three speakers and on special occasions we have eight to ten. Also need to consider what will happen after your speech. What are you trying to do? What do you hope to achieve and what do you want your audience to take away? Now further narrowing your selection, you really now need to consider your enthusiasm and interest. As you can see, I'm very comfortable in talking about uh, Toastmasters and speech making because that has been a driving force for me since 2002. Of course, consider your knowledge base and bring into your speech stories about your experiences. And the more stories you use, the greater audience engagement you will have. And finally, if you're an authority on a particular topic, then use that to great advantage to persuade. Now it's time to really be specific. What I'd like to be able to say to a lot of the people who come to do webinars here is to try not to tell everything and have 100 slides. It's a lot for people to take in. So be specific and make sure the topic is enough for the time allotted. Then you look at the sub points and you're trying to make sure that each of those add to the speech value. If they don't, then Cut them out. You need to consider what you can cut from the body of your speech when you're trying to match it to the time that you're allocated. It could be 5 to 7, it could be 8 to 10, and in some of the longer speeches you get 12 to 15. So in conclusion, what you will do is have your personal experience, your resources, and all of those consideration towards an excellent speech topic. So that's segment one. I'd be happy to get your comments into the text chat, that would be good. But there's more. <laughs> but wait, there are steak knives. The next thing is to organise your speech. This is a typical way we do it in Toastmasters. Tell them what you're going to tell them, then tell them, and finally, tell them what you told them. Of course, you develop an outline and you have your introduction, your body and your conclusion. And I think that rounds everything out neatly and makes it a more enjoyable experience for your audience, whether they are in front of you, live or online. And here's a list of steps for you to fill in the outline. I think these are typical of writing a speech as they are for a report or other kinds of educational matters. And I think the comments that you've just made in the text chat is a valuable one. I think they are great tips for teachers. When I first joined Toastmasters, I had been a teacher in the classroom for many, many years. But I was morphing into a tertiary educator and my confidence levels weren't the same. So I needed to revisit my skills and I joined Toastmasters for that very reason. I like this little quote and I'll leave you to read it for yourself. So far we've covered choosing your topic and then organising your speech. The third segment is knowing your audience. And I think this is the most important one for your consideration for doing webinars online. We can have a huge variety of audience in these sessions. We've narrowed it for you because we've sent it out to educators. We find that we've also uh, got quite a few within our audience of educators who spread across the various disciplines. We have school teachers, high school teachers or secondary, tertiary educators, community educators and corporate educators. So there's quite a lot of educational backgrounds. If you're doing big speeches as a keynote at a live audience, rather than imagining them in their underwear as some people used to say, Imagine them like this picture. 
Of course, what you need to do is keep the audience's attention. So you've got to change pace, you've got to change your voice modulation, you need to give them something to think about, something to do, and also have pauses, even silence. And does the time of the day make a difference? It does. Usually, early morning webinars are not the favourite, but if it helps get your networked Toastmasters from across the other side of the globe when it's night time for them, then that's a different matter. You need to get to know your audience and you can do that in an online manner as we did earlier with some of the polling. You can also share the microphone to make sure that you're giving other people a chance to talk. So some common speech objectives are as follows, and you might like to put into the text chat now some of those speech objectives and techniques that you might want to have people consider. Normally there are four. We want to either inform, inspire, persuade or entertain, or maybe all four at once. The last segment, Yes, you can use images and do everything as you might do online. So if you're in a Toastmaster meeting, you could use slides and you can have imagery on there as well. So just finally, some criteria for a successful opening. You need to get the attention of the audience. Introduce the topic. Establish rapport. But take only 5 to 10% of the entire speech time for that. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for your attention on, on that matter. I'll hand back to Anne just for a moment while I get to my next slide. Wow, Carol, I wondered how you go with 10 minutes and to do it almost to perfection certainly shows what Toastmasters or the experience of Toastmasters has helped you do. I think that's fabulous. And some of your points, I keep thinking, that's what I've got to do as a teacher in my classroom as well. So thank you for sharing all that. You're very welcome. And I hope that it resonated for Donna and for Lindy. I'd really uh, value some of your comments now in the text chat, in particular now about this new question. What techniques might you use for your opening statements in your speech? And let's see if Donna is still on her microphone. Yes. Is there mm -hmm. something that you might advise there, Donna? Um, ask a question that to, to establish rapport and actually get your audience's attention. So you could, if your speech was about um, So small children, you could start with, have you ever gone out and played in the rain? Um, and make it a little bit intriguing so that yeah. you've, you've engaged with your audience and, and they want to hear more. Absolutely. I like that. And as we see in the text chat, that is the hook or the coat hanger that draws them in. So using a question is a really great way to start. You might do it even more simply with stating the importance of your topics and why you want the listeners to learn or to listen. A quote is a great one, Bendy, like this one <laughs> or a startling statement of this kind. Yeah, holding up a mysterious object, I like that, Anne. So that would arouse suspense or curiosity straight away. I've seen Toastmasters come into the room with a bag full of goodies, take them out one by one, and we're just waiting with bated breath to see what else is coming out. Yeah, telling a story is another one. And yes, ja Lindy, it connects to good writing practice. I've got a couple more here for you. A rhetorical question is also a good opening line, especially if it's a research topic 
and you might want them to think about it before you get going. And the quotations that you mentioned before are really good and they, they can be either adding authority or amusement or dramatising your speech point. It can, oh, I've got that twice. Let me repeat that. <laughs> uh, it can also reference the occasion. You know, if you're to speak at a wedding or an anniversary or a special occasion, you need to recognise the importance of that and keep that in mind as you begin your opening speech. I'm sure you've heard some good and bad speeches at weddings. So there's lots of other techniques that you need to incorporate. And online, it's hard to incorporate the humour. So you try to put the laughter in your voice so that you are modulating and keeping the interest of your audience. Definitely have audience participation. How good has it been today to hear from members of our audience as we've listened and given our opinions? A demonstration is good too. And we do that frequently in Toastmasters. And to do it online, using the application sharing is a really nice one to do. I'm just going to share that little agenda with you so that you can see another little technique of how Blackboard Collaborate allows you to do that interaction. So this is a typical agenda that you might see for a meeting. And uh, this is a fictitious club. Uh, where the president is King Arthur <laughs> and I'm the area governor, of course. And the times are given, as I hope you can see here if I highlight it, the times are given for every segment on a, an agenda. So there's a timer who will let us know if we have reached the end of that time. So we go through a call to order and the Toastmaster will introduce the program. Then we have the Table Topics Master, who is a little bit like myself at the beginning of this session, who poses a question and allows you a minute to answer the, the question of the time. Then we have a couple of prepared speeches, as you can see here, each of which has their own time limits. Then the most important part of Toastmaster meetings and hearing speeches is the evaluations. We pride ourselves on the PIP principle. PIP, standing for Praise, Improvement and Praise, so that the person who's given the speech walks away from that meeting feeling 10 foot tall and ready to come back to tackle another one. And finally, we have some reports, so the timer tells us how well we adhered to our time. We're pretty anal about time in Toastmasters. Everything is done specifically for time. The general evaluator has an interesting job at the end of any meeting, they give an overall impression of how everyone has fulfilled their tasks. So this gives the leaders of the Toastmasters meeting a chance to see what others have seen of their work. And in this particular case, they spend an hour at the end having refreshments. Quite often meetings, though, are two hours long. Here's another quote for me to finish up with today. A dynamic beginning is essential for a successful speech. I will slip down now to my final slide. We won't have time for concluding. Just to show you a little bit more about myself and to give you my contact details. So with that, I will finish up and hopefully you've enjoyed a brief journey into Toastmasters. Back to you, Anne. Carol, that hour or near hour flew by very fast. I love what you talked about today because I can relate it back just to my own classroom with the students. Um, very, very interesting because I don't know a lot about Toastmasters, although family, friends, um, parents have been in it for a long time. So thank you very much. And it was wonderful, Donna and Lindy, having you with us too, contributing both on the microphone or the chat. 
So if people would like, uh, can we, are we allowed to save your slides, Carol, or we can save the chat anyway by going to File and Save. Yeah, please do save the slides. And I think before you all depart, or as you depart, you'll know you'll get a, a survey form to fill in. It'd be great if you would do that for us. Um, Carol, I can't believe you were right to the second of that. It was a 10-minute speech, wasn't it? That was amazing. And just to let you know, the final keynote is on almost in three minutes. So, Carol, I've closed down my windows because I can't go there. Do you have the link or else go back to the Aussie Live Ning? and you'll find the link to our closing keynote. Thanks again. Thank you, Anne.